I'm going to call the November 26th, uh, 2019 meeting of the Concord Planning Board to order. My mother's birthday. <gasps> Happy birthday! Uh, <laughs> so, um, but anyway, uh, and our first order of business. Oh, well, I should also mention this meeting is being uh, videotaped and uh, you're welcome to make your own recording. Uh, Susan Bates is in the audience, <laughs> the only member of the audience, but if you do, let us know. Um, so um, the, the first uh, item of business is uh, the uh, open meeting law complaint that uh, we received. Oh. I, that's what I thought. It was at the top of the... 7 a.m. or 7 p.m. Oh, excuse me. It's this new formatting. Yeah, yeah. I think I get I got stuck because I just saw the number one and I just... Okay. Sorry. So let's go back. Our first order of business. very brief. Okay. So, yeah. At the last meeting, the the property owner for 159 Sudbury came to the board and um, had a good conversation and then they were directed to go talk to the letter. Yeah. Um, that was supposed to happen on Monday um, and nobody's gotten back to me. So there isn't um, anything to talk about. There's nothing to talk about except um, should, and I imagine they'll be on the agenda for next time if they yeah. talk to somebody. But the one thing I did want to bring to the board's attention is that if the board does decide to um, put forth a warrant article to amend the the boundary, boundary line. Um, it's going to be my recommendation that you fix it over here as well. Okay. This is the gas station. Yeah. Oh boy. Um, and so just fix it so it runs along yeah. the property lines. Okay. Thank you. That's so curious, isn't it? Um, how the how the Previous district originally thing. got laid out? It's a certain distance from the road. Okay. Yeah. That's uh. yeah. That's all. Um, so that so would, so I presume that, that gas that station then has a special permit as well of some sort to be able to operate the, or it's grandfather. It, it's more than likely legal non-conforming. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that's going to be my, my recommendation. Um, if, if the board is going to change the map, just fix the map on that side as well. Yeah. This side was already fixed yeah. at some time. I don't yeah. Know you can it. see the parking lot. Go, go. Um, so that's, that's my update. So it might reappear on your next agenda as well. Okay. I guess in question, I mean, this, with the same logic that we thought that they would ask the abutter immediately to adjacent, do we feel like we need any other abutters if we're expanding that? I mean, it's a little bit different circumstances because we know that the expansion is related to essentially moving the driveway over and all that, but I mean, right. I don't think it's necessary, but since I don't, I raised I don't issue, think it's necessary for these because it's just correcting. Yeah. Yeah. It's enough. just correcting it. Will they be noticed or anything? Um, I if if the board decides to move forward, yeah, yeah. I, I will approach yeah. those two property owners. Yes. Is, oh, you will. is okay. that one fifty three? Is that is that one? This one? Yeah. Those are apartments. Those, those, are, those are apartments. Apartments. Yeah. Okay. Rental apartments. Yeah, and it's interesting. There are two parcels, but that's one complex. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And isn't the house that's uh, next to isn't that also like a dentist's office no that's this one oh, okay it, yeah well no but i think it used to be oh. it could i think uh, it was, yeah, no, was it commercial is it a chiropractic so chiropractic? i thought there was some, something some in there. it appears yeah. to be kind of um, i thought maybe no. the house just a house yeah, it seems yeah. Like does that not count as a I vaguely business? remember there being something like a home there. occupation okay uh-huh learn so much okay yeah yeah Okay, so should we move on then to administrative business? And now yes. we can discuss the open meeting law complaint. Um, so uh, we got this uh, complaint from Tanya Galis of 62 Prescott Road. Um, there is, as explained on the complaint form, um, what we need to do now is disseminate the complaint across the board members, which we've done, uh, to meet and review the complaint, which we're doing right now, um, and then uh, to write up a response. And uh, we can delegate that to a member of staff, uh, but we need to discuss this and come to our consensus as far as our response. Um, so, yeah. 
one. For and we can ask for more time if we need more time. In terms of the scope of the response, um, do we have a sense of should it be to rebut the points in the complaint to address other steps we might take? Well, that's the point of our discussion. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, I don't know if people have input that they'd like to make. I, I have opinions. I, I have opinion. Okay. To share. Sure. I think that the, well, there were a couple of elements to it. One of which was that I think that the basis of our decision was um, brought forth late in the process and not reflected in the minutes. The basis of the decision purporting to be that it was better than a subdivision. And I think that that misconstrued the conversation. I don't think that was the basis of the decision. Certainly when I went back and looked at a video of myself, mm. what I said was, because as we know, we need in these PRDs, part of it is considering um, the surrounding neighborhood. Yeah. And I said that when I com com compare it to the, not a hypothetical unsubmitted subdivision, but the actual subdivision immediately next door, and yeah. immediately across the street, that I thought that this model of development with the clustered houses and the preservation of the house in front was preferable. Yeah. Now, that being said, that still was not the, the reason the, for the, the approval. The, 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 yeah. the central reason for yeah. the approval. Right. Um, it, it was based upon me thinking that they met the other requirements for a PRD and having made a lot of different adjustments. So the fact that that wasn't reflected in the minutes, I, I didn't think um, missed the point of certainly what my input in the meeting was. Okay. Other, other perspectives? Um, I, I guess I, I would just add that just for my own understanding, um, as we deliberate, we're um, deliberating on the entire record. And that, so as we do so, the basis of a decision isn't just the discussion that takes place in here, but is everything that's um, part of the record, including the applicant's materials and including the comments from the public and including Elizabeth's report that she writes up for us that she turns into a recommendation. Um, so that's, is that correct? When you're deliberating on your recommendation to the Board of Appeals, it is based on the entire record of what you have been um, provided through written material, um, presentations, and um, anything that's in the, the record for the application, correct? Okay. And yeah. then just another point was there was this discussion as to whether we'd taken a vote or not. Yes. Well, we had an opportunity, I think, to review the comments on the draft minutes about that point. And I think we, as a group, looked at the draft minutes and determined that they were accurately reflecting what happened. Right? I mean, I don't know. Did you have a different I, opinion? Well, I may not have been here for that review of the draft minutes. Oh, okay. But... but um, Maybe my, you could... my my recollection and, and having refreshed myself by watching the video is that we you sort of did a uh, a let's see a show of hands of where we're going and whether yeah. we should direct the planner to prepare right. a draft letter of recommendation right uh, at which point we would have a formal vote to approve the letter of recommendation right um, but we and, got a sense of the board yeah. right and in fact then when we came back for our final deliberation, that was the following meeting. Right. We we met, we deliberated, we had a vote. Um, yeah. We did not take public comment at that point. That's right. Um, so so as to whether that constituted the vote or not, um, it, 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 it seemed to be to be a, a a business practice we've done in the past of providing the planner direction as to whether we're ready to that, to move on to the formalities of a vote, but it was not the vote itself. Right. And do we have a convention um, in the minutes on whether we call out when we call out a vote as a vote mm -hmm. that it's always yeah. a formal vote versus yes. we don't mm -hmm. do that for straw polls? No, but we right. did note that we did take that. Understood. Yeah. But we so, didn't. But yeah, so yeah. in terms of recording it as a vote, as we typically record a vote, yeah. we have a convention that's a vote <laughs> only calling out the votes that are formal votes. Yeah. Because. 
they are moved and seconded and understood. Voted. Yeah. Right. And okay. the, the, so we're, we know who consistent. does each we of do those that. things. We do that yeah. consistently. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I'd like to make one more comment about the, the alternative to a subdivision thing, which is if you look at 10.1, the purpose of the planned residential development bylaw, the very first sentence says, Plan residential development allows by special permit from the board an alternative pattern of residential land development. So it is by its nature always an alternative to what otherwise would be the de facto pattern of development, which is more often than not would be a subdivision. Now, I also agree with Burton that, you know, again, while I think the context of a PRD uh, application is always as an alternative to a conventional uh, plan, that it wasn't the, the crucial thing that made the decision. It was a lot of changes that did to the plan to improve the, um, especially for me, the most crucial thing was the, the change to the street, streetscape and the preservation of structures, which I, you absolutely cannot take for granted. Um, and uh, that I, I consider to be a, a very, a uh, great outcome for this uh, this uh, project, even though there are many other little details I would rather see different, uh, quite a few details, in fact, I'd rather see different, but that's true of every purity. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that that was, we, we perhaps learned a lesson in, 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 uh, in speaking freely when some people might be hanging on every word, but that wasn't part of my deliberative process at all. It's yeah. comparing it against, I, I, I couldn't tell you how many houses could have gone in if it had been a subdivision. I couldn't tell you how, right. what the lots, if it met the minimum lot sizes, anything like that. I didn't consider that really at any point. I mean, and, and specifically, I wasn't comparing it against what subdivision can go in there. I was well, and there, that's the other thing is that I wasn't speculating about any particular division of the property other than just that the fact that a subdivision divides a lot into conforming parcels, regardless mm -hmm. of what proposal that is, how many lots there are, whatever. And that just that is a pattern of development versus something that preserves open space and preserves structures. And it, you know, in, in the sight line from the street, that's superior in my mind. And stepping back as to the, the crux of the open meeting law complaint, yeah, I think was that the minutes themselves did not reflect the, del the deliberation in a right. way that according to the requirements of the open meeting law, a reasonable observer would be able to come back later and interpret wh the, what business was undertaken and how a decision was made. We have, what, seven meetings, or however many meetings we've yeah. had on this project, which did change over time, but we were raising the same issues, yep. this, asking the same questions, comparing it against the same sections of the bylaw throughout that process. I think our deliberative process was clear and the, and the basis for our decision was clear. I don't think there's anything that comes anywhere remotely close to hiding the ball on how the decision was made such that a reasonable person couldn't come along later and determine from looking at the meetings why the planning board decided to do what it did. Yep. So I think the complaint is without merit. And any, any... I, yeah, just one more thing and I, um, would hope that we would be able to speak freely as because especially because of the open meeting laws which we all um, abide by um, we don't informally have the opportunity to gather and practice and understand like exactly what we want to say so for someone like myself who is new on the board um, I might want to think about the requirements and the context and the environment of the requirements, which might be something like, well, why does this requirement exist in the first place? Well, it's because what the alternative. And mm -hmm. so I just would hope that we would be able to be speak freely and um, not feel as if this was, were an adjudicatory setting that we would need to... Um, and by the way, I should mention that they, Does that make sense? yeah, that the courts have found that because they realize we're volunteers, we're not professionals, we're, you know, that there's a looser set of uh, criteria around, you know, what we have to, I mean, we have to, of course, fulfill open meeting law, we do, but that, you know, in terms of every 
little detail having to be what you know an, an attorney would consider okay that's perfect we can't be held to that standard because we don't know en enough um well and i also think that discussing for example i mean there's nothing in there that says you cannot consider how this compares to a hypothetical subdivision okay. there are yeah. there are requirements in the statute for pr 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 um, approving a prd yeah having discussions about and we walked through all other yeah, things that I could go in you, there right. yeah. repeatedly yeah. what you had for lunch that. whatever it may be we can have that discussion ultimately and i think you know just my my takeaway on this is um our decisions have to be based upon and and find and find uh, support in 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 what the re, the planning regulation uh, the, the 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 bylaw provides for the, the basis of the decision you know does it meet this criteria that criteria the other criteria we've looked at other issues like what comes to mind is another one that was a very high profile one was you um, before your time we were looking at some cell towers right there's pretty specific um, requirements that it needs to meet or not meet, the pro proponent needs to put forth their argument for it. And we considered it solely on those points. I think with an eye to knowing because of prior litigation in the town that we needed to get those points right. And and mm -hmm. and we couldn't certainly be irrational or arbitrary in, in making our decision. In the case of a PRD, one of the things that's d different about a PRD than a subdivision is I think that there is there are more fr words and phrases in the in the bylaw that refer to things like uh, it's not the word but you know neighborhood character or it, it, uh, you know those kinds of things which are inherently subjective mm -hmm. and I think that discussion should be free free ranging mm -hmm. which is a little bit of how we've tripped upon this current situation mm -hmm. um, I I was making a subjective comparison to other developments existing in the neighborhood um, I don't I don't see that as being disqualifying. But it wasn't also the basis of my decision. I just want to iterate. Yeah. And I think that's time. the most important part about when it says in the complaint, what action do you want the public body to take? And the changes suggesting seem to want them to change us to change our reason for recommendation. And I think we've all agreed this was not the reason for the recommendation. Subdivision would be worse. Well, it wasn't my reason for sure. I mean, I I think that the reason it's not that the, the reason for recommendation reason. is because yeah. of the it met the criteria in the. And thank goodness so we have Elizabeth. Have, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank goodness we have a tape recording. Um, so at this point, to um, and the only other I believe the only other point in here had to do with um, statements that I made at a board of appeals meeting, which. Um, isn't here which, which is not part of your minutes yeah so um, I, yeah so if the board wants to provide their okay and then um, I don't know if it's worth that, going down that, the list I'm sorry on which point um, the yeah. point in here that um, that the town planner made uh, comments at a board of appeals meeting regarding a vote of the planning board um, I'm I'm not sure how that is an open meeting law violation for the planning board or your minutes. I, yeah, I don't think it's something that we have to think about. Yeah. So we would want to address that in yeah. our response. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> the response should be that um, it's not pertinent to the planning board. That for on that point. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's worth going down this public body checklist for creating and approving meeting minutes. I mean, it'd be kind of tedious to do so. I think that. You know, it just, I think we meet the criteria is all I'm going to say. There's a, a list of things that, um, you know, we have to do for so, minutes. I, I'm astounded at the level of detail and the, le and the, and the amount of information oh, that goes in into our, our meeting minutes. As, yeah. as a secretary for several corporations who's taken a lot of minutes in my life, <laughs> I, I can tell you that our minutes are verbose, lengthy, and detailed. Uh -huh. um, so, uh, um, and, and compared to, uh, you know, uh, when it comes to open meeting law, I'm on the CPC committee, uh, and and I think our 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 minutes are equal to that. Though, um, you know, that's also planning yeah. staff that prepares those, and they do an excellent job. So, um, I don't think we need so, to bolster them. Um, at this point, um, if the board would like me to draft a letter for review and signature by the chair. Um, 
Do we need to make a motion on that? Or Oh sure. Why? If you just state your reason. <laughs> But I, I well, let, let's let's be formal. So I, yeah. what I would suggest is that we we have a vote. We recommend that town planner prepare a letter. Yeah, and then a response, and then we then um, just thinking about how we want to you, whether you can have one kind of, you can have one person review it. Yeah, one on behalf of the board. Yeah. I think Burton is I probably had, the. I thought he was a volunteer. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right, we'll do Thank that. you, Burton. Okay. So yeah. at this point, we have. Um, taking some of Burton's comments uh, about um, the um, it's the board's opinion that the basis of the appeal was um, you know, not on the subdivision it was based the, your deliberation and recommendation was based on everything that was in the record um, and get to Burton, um, Burton or um, Burton's point about and Matt's point in the purpose of the PRD, it's an alternative form. And um, you know, there was no comparison of this project to a subdivision. A of specific this, subdivision. Of yeah. this property. Right. Um, in but you know, general terms, that's the purpose for a PRD is an alternative form of um, of development. Of development. And then um, uh, and then there was Burton's um, point um, about the um, the deliberative process. Um, and the and vote. Yeah, the, the vote. The, include the, the question vote. that the question that the, of a vote. The vote yeah. to recommend happened on the twenty fourth versus the tenth. Um, oh, for the vote. Yes. I'm, I'm not sure I understand the materiality of that, but the point being, I thought our formal vote happened on the 24th it, we recommended it, to you that you that you prepare a letter for yeah. us to consider on and we did even review the draft minutes in light of this you know comments that were made and determined that they were properly written okay so no i think i have enough to pull a letter um together um i think this was filed on november 18th um the board has uh, what 14 days business days hopefully uh, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to check. Um, Let's see if there's so. what it says here. Fourteen business days. Fourteen business it's, days. Oh, okay. One, one, two, so one, two. Three. Well, we've got fourteen days to review the complaint, and then after review, we've got fourteen days to file a response. Okay. So I just, I just wanted to make sure with the holiday that there, because um, I, I won't be able to. Do this till next week. Yeah, I mean, we should I have it until the middle of it's December. Nine floors up from me at work. <laughs> okay, so um, next week I'll Ashburn have this um, to Burton That's work. To Thank review. you. Okay. Were we going to vote on that? Do you want to vote yes. on that? Oh. Sure. Um, a motion. I'll I, entertain I a motion that we uh, ask the planner to prepare a response letter based upon the points of our discussion this evening and that uh, she circulate that to me to review it on behalf of the board uh, with time to submit it within 14 day business days from today. Second. Second. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor? All right. Passed unanimously. Okay. So. Let's move on now to the discussion of our November 21st zoning forum that we held last week. And uh, what do people think? Um, I've gotten actually comments back from people that they they thought it was really good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, and, and very helpful at this stage. I thought it was very helpful thinking of, of having to potentially present one of those even though I'm going to try to, you know, pitch mine to the uh, the moderator as being totally non-controversial, but <laughs> if I have to present them in a <coughs> town meeting, yeah. I mean, we, we had, um, you know, two groups of about 15 people, and they and they and they each asked at least three questions that were the same in each in each group. 
Mm -hmm. um, which was like, oh, well, that's exactly what we need to be prepared for mm -hmm. because those are the concerns. And a couple of them were, in fact, things that were raised that we, I don't think, had come up in our consideration of the right. article previously. Mm -hmm. So which it was really valuable. Does the just so accessory dwelling for the yep. viewing audience, your group was accessory, accessory dwelling, dwelling units. Yeah. And, and people were asking about what would it mean to the increase in impervious paving um, if you were essentially increasing the number of residents, it could be utilizing mm -hmm. the same lot. Um, what was, do you remember? One, one unusual one was, um, what if it was a, built on a trailer? Like a oh, the, tiny the house tiny on a house trailer. Concept, and so the yeah. building codes that applied to that, kind of just making sure we understood that. And yeah, there was one more. Um, uh, kind of how would you enforce owner occupied? Oh yeah, oh, that was yeah. the other big question. And okay. and Marsha yeah, addressed that, that kind of while she was in our group while we were there too. And then um, parking. Yeah. Talked about parking. So yeah, definitely got good things and hopefully I mean, there wasn't a lot of feedback in terms of shaping it, but more like just kind of asking how we arrived at our square footage and did we think it, you know basically did we think it was going to serve the purpose but certainly a lot of support yeah mm -hmm. not that it was a representative of Group. the larger town meeting <laughs> yeah. audience but it was it seemed there were people who were really keen mm -hmm. about the proposal mm -hmm. um, to do that uh, and and specifically I mean maybe we frame the question but specifically talking about how they thought that was a good step to create a market driven generation of some affordable housing by limiting the square footage yeah so mm -hmm. yeah so do think... you see any um uh, changes needed changes to the draft I, I, what i'd like to be able to discuss further is that is that parking and impervious surface question i think that the concern about owner occupancy marcia stepped in and and talked about how that's currently enforced so that would be something that we need to go into the presentation um and I think that the question about trailers, we need to look at our other bylaw on trailers and consider yeah. how that would intersect and potentially cause <coughs> unintended consequences. Um, that's more of just getting an understanding, but I, it may, I think it, it is worth further discussion on the, the impervious surface because I think we need, just need to consider generally whether that could be, you know, whether there could be, you know, a parking, I, I mean, currently, for for example, on a single family house, are there restrictions on uh, the, 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 it's conforming on on Cowboy. how parking can be laid out? There's nothing. Right? Nope. Somebody can they could pave their whole pave their whole front. whole lot because they don't even have a they don't even have a a, a run, what's the water runoff um, storm water storm water. No. No. See, and that would be one of the ways that I would suggest maybe going after this is rather than take it on as part of the accessory dwelling, would be look at low impact development stormwater bylaw, you know, for the town, you know, mm -hmm. for residential stormwater. We've talked about it for a few years. And while it wouldn't be directly attacking that, it would, I think, help reduce the impacts. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I think there was a concern that especially in some in in the ten thousand square foot zone areas that I mean I love Somerville but there's a lot of paved yard the yards that are paved to the to the corners there yeah. um, uh, with you know parking everywhere but where the house is mm -hmm. and I think that was a concern and I don't know how like you said I, I think it's beyond the scope of the accessory dwelling unit by law but well I mean um, not so um, if 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 you, if it's a, a concern that was raised in in both forms, and mm -hmm. you know is is part of the you know the climate change and sustainability and um, you know, that discussion in the community, um, not addressing it now. Um, y yes, later on you could the, you know decide to move forward with some type of residential stormwater bylaw, but you know. That you're talking a couple of years away, yeah. and everything that you know came through before that, yeah, we go through and apply. So, um, you know, the between you know now and you have two meetings in December. Mm -hmm. um, there is the possibility for a um, another meeting January seventh uh, if you had to. The warrant closes on the tenth. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, you can think about, and, and I also think it was parking, number of parking, so not mm -hmm. requiring two spaces for the accessory dwelling, you know, requiring, you know, a maximum of one or one additional space. Is, is there, so is there a parking requirement for, for a dwelling house? Uh, for dwelling yeah, unit? yeah. Two, two spaces per dwelling unit oh. is, the, is the requirement in the zoning bylaw. So then, yeah, well, but we definitely don't want accessory dwellings to have to have two additional spots. We don't want that, spots. but then you can't them. really say it, it, it's a man, it's a minimum. So you can't really say then the accessory dwelling unit has a maximum very right? because you could say, oh well, the primary house I decided to have four spaces. Well, but I mean, you can say that the you know accessory dwelling unit you know a minimum of one parking space and. You know, not not everybody wants to pave over, and you can say that that one parking space shall be an impervious surface. You mean a a pervious a pervious surface? A pervious surface, yes. Sorry. <laughs> so you can, I mean, you can add that to the bylaw. As a, I know, think that's I, we should give consideration to that. It was raised by an, a number of people, both both as a concern about overall parking and traffic, but also the uh, um, the resiliency aspect. Mm -hmm. um, and then I can tell you to, um, that this came up actually, um, let's see, Monday. Yeah. Uh, the finance director was just notified by DOR that towns can request um, a list from DOR of um, all the people who ha are registering and paying um, tax hmm. under a Airbnbs. Oh, wow. Um, so they can provide a town a list of anybody in the town. Um, hmm. So that email was forwarded to the building commissioner. Um, and so there was a concern with accessory dwellings that people are just going to do that and then you mm -hmm. know, have them be rented for Airbnbs. And so we now actually have a mechanism that the building commissioner can get this list, send out a courtesy notice, saying you, you, you're on this list, you need to file for a special permit for a bed and breakfast right. so that you know the abutters can be notified. And um, so there now is a mechanism to be able to monitor that, uh, which I mean, up, until, up until now, it was only um, if somebody filed a zoning complaint, the building commissioner would actually go on Airbnb, put in Concord, look at the picture, <laughs> Yeah. See if it's the picture of the zoning violation. So it was it was definitely not intuitive. Yeah. Um, the the only other thing that came up, and I don't I don't want to take too much on this because it does seem to be much more straightforward than the PRD and things like that, was um, one mention that which made sense to me that if you can obtain by special permit a uh, thousand square foot, then the thought was, well, everybody's gonna do that because they can and yeah. it's more square footage and it's a, a lot of work. It takes well, and, some time. And that was the so response. Process. Yeah. Our response was the work again. and the cost, the additional cost, was hopefully the deterrent to keep everybody from doing that. I mean, not every house is really in a position to put a thousand square feet. I, I mean, you that's know, a good point. you can't stay within the FAR, and you know, in okay, some yeah. cases. Well, and, so. and perhaps a counter to that a little bit is is once you go into special permit territory. You're kind of dealing with the status quo today, right? And um, in terms of how how many people are going to utilize the mechanism of, of building mm. an accessory dwelling unit, there are other restrictions, right? This allows it to be outside the footprint of the existing house and whatnot. But we're not seeing a lot of that today. Mm -hmm. The idea here is to do it by right. And there was one person there who I'm guessing that was quite familiar with the feasibility of this, maybe in you know a contractor or developer, mm. and he said, "This is great." removing the hurdle of the special permit will make this so much more cost, you know, yeah. uh, the, the Doable. economics yeah. work. Yeah. Um, he was in one group and it was the next group that really raised concern of, of pushing it. Mm. He, he seemed to think that any excessive anything would be limited by the building code. So that would kind of take care of um, anything that that would be enough hurdles. So the buy right was good. All right, that's. So for um, for that one, if you know, if there's any changes you want to the draft <clears throat> bylaw for next time, I'm not sure you're going to be a, you know, um, you might look at having you do your 
bylaw discussion uh, as your first item for your oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. For oh, the boy. sake of the public, I, I think it's actually better to do yeah. that first. Uh, do do the yeah. the PRD application first. Um, so. so if you want to just get back to me with any <coughs> suggested actual changes to the draft bylaw. Yeah, you've given me st some stuff to think about, so I'll go okay. look at. Yeah. Okay. Does anybody else have any thoughts on the parking? What would be an appropriate way to to provide that kind of restriction? I mean, I did have the same thought you already mentioned, which was just that if there's not a cap for the main house, they'll just say, okay, we'll put a previous parking spot over here, but two more, three more, or whatever over here that are... Maybe just... Yeah, that's, that's still that's still an additional cost. It's, of course. I mean, yeah. But you think it's we should be clarifying that that accessory dwelling unit doesn't require more than one parking space to go correct. with it. I, so the implication being, you'd think, would say that because it's an additional dwelling unit, that there would no. be a requirement for two more spots because... They, yeah. So, so that seems like a no-brainer to fix, that it should be... That it shall only require one. Okay. Um, then I, I don't see a clean way of putting a cap on it because if you put an overall cap, you're you're putting a restriction on a property that wouldn't exist on any other properties because it has an accessory dwelling unit. Well, you got to give up something. Sure. <laughs> so. I mean, you could say that you can't have more than some percent increase in impervious surface as a consequence of doing your accessory uh, dwelling. Sounds like and a then, special permit review. Yeah, I was going to say, then somebody's got to <laughs> yeah, for that come analysis. Up with that, and yeah. then, okay. okay, yeah, the building commissioner would not like right. that one. I can, I can see it now. Okay. Uh, Nathan, I know you had done the reprise of the um, two-family at the meeting, so maybe you could lead off that. Yeah, I mean, uh, a couple of the same points. Um, the parking was an issue. The use as a Airbnb type place was an issue. Um, but I thought in general, uh, similar to what Burton was saying, I thought it was helpful just to get a sense of what people would, you know, outside of this group think uh, about these ideas at first glance. And that helps to inform how we'll talk about it leading up to town meeting and for the presentations. Um, so I thought that was that was definitely helpful uh, for us. And I did I, I, one of the other things I was thinking of. I don't know about anybody else's, uh, but in the two groups that we had, there was nobody who was opposed to, to the concept. Were, yeah, to, in in really in any way. No, I, right. Um, which was kind of surprising. I I, yeah. I thought there'd be at least one person in one of the groups who just, you know, by chance. Yeah, I would say, like, opposed. I don't want those. So were there yeah. any changes to the two-family that kind of, to the draft warrant article that kind of rise, rose to the top? Other than those concerns around how to deal with the increase in, in impervious surface, which is pretty much a shared yeah, concern, concern with the accessory dwellings. The only other one was a former board member who was advocating pretty strongly for adding in residence B, but we told him to be patient and wait until we run this for a while and see how that goes. Well, I, we actually, in our group, we heard some feedback on your, on, on the two family. Program. Oh, okay. <laughs> so there's overlap. Well, which was, why are we focusing on the already densely populated parts of the town? Why is this being limited to, what is that's A, right? A's, C. C. Yeah. Why are we focusing on C and, when, and, and other areas? Um, which I, I think we did that deliberatively because yeah. that we're focusing on that sort of uh, smart, smart growth, growth part, plan. Oh, yeah. plan. Um, but people were worried about an, an ec excess of density in our mm. village centers so. areas. But, but that turned on to a talk about transportation and stuff too, which is good. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I tried to cover it in the overview. Mm -hmm. So. Um, okay, uh, then PRDs, do you guys have lively discussion? Uh, we did, <laughs> and I also felt it was useful and appreciated um, the work that you and Elizabeth did to set it up, um, and 
people wanted more of what we were doing, like even more aggressive measures. Mm. Um, there was no one there to express um, a concern that we shouldn't be making the PRDs more uh, aggressive in terms of trying to get maximum open space and um, green building and LID. Um, th that being said, um, I didn't hear an appreciation or, or acknowledgement that there's like this tipping point at which things could be made so difficult that we um, just end up with a subdivision, you know, not to mm. go back to that difficult topic. Um, but the fact is, is that that's there. And that's the balance that is currently, um, we're trying to strike an existing bylaw. And when we make changes, I think we need to keep that in mind. Um, so that was a comment that, that <coughs> you and Hallie tried to convey, or there were others, there were others in the breakout group that Sorry, no, that's something I, that I said in the first breakout group yeah. and not okay. the second. Okay. Um, I didn't hear anybody else expressing that concern um, or, or acknowledging it. Um, but yeah, no, but it was uh, really useful. So there was just a lot of um, um, enthusiasm for um, increasing the requirement for open space, um, being more aggressive or aggressive about um, having the buildings be green building and LID and efficient and electric. Um, there was some discussion of a recent bylaw that was passed in Brookline um, that was attempting to regulate um, new, uh, fuel, new construction or something. Fuel use and new construction. Um, and yeah, th so that's it. So um, we're kind of in a different place with the PRD bylaw in terms of where the development of the amendment. So. Um, well, I, th I, I mean, so part of um, the whole uh, PRD bylaw is, um, and we can see if Marsha can come back, is the history of the bylaw and when it you know, first went in and you know, when it wasn't used and then certain things were changed and it started to being you know, used again. Mm -hmm. And I think your point that you made to the group, the first group, that um, there has to there has to be um, this balance because if you if you make it so onerous, or it's it's just as expensive, then then you're not you're not going to get them. Um, and I think the other as part of the presentation, the other balance is is that it is um, impossible to have a project that is. Um, has more open space, is denser, affordable housing. affordable housing, and compatible with the neighborhood. You know, those four things cannot go together. Um, you, you you can you can have a couple. You can have you know one, two, uh, possibly three if it was you know the perfect project place and developer. But you you cannot have all four. Yeah. Um, so. I, I think that's going to be a hard um, a hard thing to convey uh, to town meeting, um, and you know while having an aspect of more open space and LID and sustainability and green buildings, um, you know is is great. There there's a reality to you know the development and um, and I'm not sure how you get that across. And we also don't know exactly where that tipping point is, and right. it's probably different for every property. Oh, it, it's definitely different for every property. Right. It's definitely so, for every different, each different developer. I do think there are things that we can do to just update this a little bit in terms of where we are with some advancements in, um, in the economics and green building and LID. I think it's more economical than it used to be. So I, don't, I think we can push a little bit on it, but I agree yeah. with your point that okay. we can't just... And it's more attractive from a... You know, for developers to attract people. Oh, good point. To these homes, yeah. Too. So there's it's much more demand, yeah. especially was, in this area. I was going to say, particularly <laughs> where you're trying to build. Yes. Yeah. I, I we wondered if maybe we should yeah. be pivoting the discussion here from point two of our agenda to point three, yes, which is really, you know, maybe we can drill into Haley's uh, proposed uh, changes to our PRD bylaw, and uh, can we talk about process for a second? Sure. So um, I thought Elizabeth was issue, going to issue a recommendation on this. 
So when I saw Haley's, I was kind of waiting to see Elizabeth's suggestion um, before I really looked closely at Haley's. So I just wanted to understand like whether you were gonna issue something that was maybe either marking this up or your own thing. Maybe so that was that was you know I sent when I saw Haley's I you know sent it to to Matt saying it's like okay well um, if if the board goes this direction this is a completely different style of warrant article. Um, it's more of the completely yeah delete section delete and replace delete yeah. and replace. I mean this is this is a much harder warrant article to draft than what I was originally under um, from the last discussion. The like strike twenty five percent yeah and, and put change in, that to yeah. thirty three. I mean yeah. that that's a completely different right. completely different warrant article going through the bylaw where it currently says board. You would have to, you would have to say planning board. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a, so you had um, planning board um, changing the table um, to have require site plan. You change twenty five to thirty three, and and I and I site plan planning board twenty five to thirty three. This um, is and the then some some element of. Of sustainability, uh, so it was like the green buildings. Well, a green LID in, in yeah. stormwater in the in the appropriate like reference. Review that. That's um, be called yes. heroes. Um, well, that's that is also a question I had is whether site plan review kind of already, since it includes those sustainability criteria, do we kind of get them for free if yes. we specify site plan? Yes. And we don't necessarily have to stick it in here, although no. I think it does help in the purpose. To kind of add that, you know. Correct. Um, but the site plan can be more easily amended. Than um, this. So if you like, no, no, we put this in. No, all, it's harder all to that, change than the site. Plan. So currently, under the under primary uses, if you go, we have our to site table, plan review criteria mm -hmm. in the bylaw. Yeah, yeah if you go to the at. table, a PRD. When you get down to site plan approval, it for PRD, says, yes. it says not required. Right, but it will say yes. Right, so, I thought we were so we're going to change that to say yes, and then we'll and then when somebody files, they also have to file under eleven point eight, and all the A criteria H in there of the site plan criteria would then have to be analyzed for PRD. Just can you please read the criteria relating to sustainability? Yeah, uh, yeah. H um, incorporation of sustainability and resilience principles into the site design. That result in a plan that is responsive to the environment and actively contributes to the development of a more sustainable community. So it doesn't call out LID or green building. Or preservation of trees as one thing that keeps coming up in our PRD reviews. Mm -hmm. um, which if we're if if we're doing a cut and replace, I that would be another thing that I would maybe suggest. Well, I think that's one of Matt's um, I mean if you're if you're not gonna go to, you know. Tally's level, so but it's on the bottom. There. Add on, you know, take some of the elements from this. I think that's mm -hmm. where, um, you know, you can, you can, add, and I'm and I'm not sure if it's um, principles or, um, I'm going to actually use the current bylaw. Um, it's actually would be in. Um, I think you would probably um, you have your planning board uh, it was the the criteria where is it I just have to find it oh um So under the current section 1042 planning board report and recommendations, the board has to review the development statement and plans 
um, and make your rec uh, recommendation. And there's uh, a review of the proposed development, including design, use of the buildings, and open space between and around them, pedestrian vehicular circulation, uh, parking, grading, landscaping, trees, uh, landscaping, screening. I mean, you, you can add, you know, preservation of existing. So I think there's way to, to add into this criteria those elements. There's also in here, um, <coughs> there's a requirement in here regarding the grading. It now, won't we actually have to rewrite the section of the PRD bylaw where we talk about our planning, you know, our, our recommendation and what our report has to contain and stuff like that? Because now once we're the permitting yeah. authority, we're just going to... Yeah, this, this yeah, will... This we'll have will to recast all that. I mean, I wonder if we're already kind of on a path to having to redo Section 10, you know. I mean, that by the time you oh, replace all the references to you, pla you planning might. board throughout, it's going to be pretty hard to avoid just saying, okay, here's new section 10. Right. No, I think you, you, the bylaw itself will likely get to a point where it's delete in its entirety and adopt new. I think we're going to have to. Yeah. Um, but but I, it's going to but be... But I don't think it's going to be... Um, I, I, I think, well, you know, a lot of the points that... Um, Hallie made in here. Um, well, I actually, I, yeah, I was I, hoping I mean, to, to discuss. Lot. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to write up a, a formal okay. response to this, but I did have some feedback on, on these proposed changes. So one of the questions I wanted to ask was in the sustainability section that Haley mm -hmm. put together. Here, <laughs> if we were to do, to do a delete and replace for that section, um, is it possible to make references to a table like this that exists somewhere else? So that yes. if it is updated, say, in 2024, some new technology yes. comes out and makes our 2030 you know, deadline that's possible. Then that's preferable. We adjust the it there rather than yes. having to go through here. So yes. good. Then, yeah, I would, I would suggest if we were to do that um, to make sure that those... The question would be elsewhere. The question would be: Is there currently a place where that exists now hmm. for you to incorporate into a bylaw amendment for a warrant that closes January tenth? Um, which I I I don't I don't know if that currently exists now. So what what is the what is the threshold that needs to be met as something that can be referenced? So can the can the town itself say these are goal guidelines, post them on the town website, and then the that reference that? Because I, I, I bet the climate I, I bet the climate action two days. <laughs> I bet the climate change sustainability committee would be able to produce that and justify that and publish that as goals right. for the town. Um, I know they've talked about, huh. well, obviously, housing goals, so yeah. I guess you could bring that up. Uh, <laughs> okay. Could, I mean, is, is it possible to do it more like to something that's produced by um, not a part of our municipal operation, but something more like lead or some other kind of organization um green building organization or something that is is there do you know what i mean <laughs> well so i i mean i think at this point it um i can ask the sustainability director if there currently exists this table yeah um elsewhere in the realm of the town um, because, I mean, to Nathan's point, it's um, it would be at the, the the second to last sentence. PRD corresponds to the value identified in, um, you know, whatever the source the, material is. Yeah, yeah, the you know the town's um, you know, whatever that source is. Um, that's that is always preferable. 
in a zoning bylaw instead of having a table such I, as this. It just makes me really uncomfortable yeah. to have this table, dated table. I a mean, dated table yeah, is different. It's case. really um, kind of. So let me let me speak to um, to the sustainability director and see if there is. Um, and to your point, Kate, the you know, whether there is some guidance document already out there, whether the state has developed something or is there something that's like lead for residential buildings that's not quite so <coughs> that's something like, you know, a level three rating of this organization which can which might consider like all sorts of things, like lead how you can get points for different wait, I'm at, do you know about lead? Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, let me so let me talk to Kate and okay. we'll also talk to Gary Kleiman. But do you know what do you know what I'm saying yeah. in terms of like yeah, wanting to get like have it be certified in some way by um, an external organization and have it be um, like they get credit for different we don't need to specify exactly what they need to do, but they get credit for different um, aspects of And there is a public kind of, reference and that can yeah, be dynamic. Yeah, yeah it can be updated. Whereas this is enshrined in the it, enshrined in our bylaw, and it, it may look great right now. It might not look have, great like in a, a while, you know. For residential, I'm not sure. What's that? Oh, you mean like lead certification, certification for residential? Yeah, like if I'm homes, you know. Um. So, do you want? I mean, would it be? Do you non? Do you want to go through? I'd like to go through and, and make some comments. Yeah. And, I mean, although okay. I don't want to shut down this discussion, that you know. Um, I, I just want uh, maybe just starting from the top. I thought that it is nice to break out a list in the purpose, but on the other hand, it does uh, overlap with and occasionally conflict with what's in the yep. paragraph, and so that needs to be rationalized. So I don't have any sort of specific redlining I'd want to do, but I do think that if we got to consolidate it so that it, it is consistent. I completely agree. So my rec my suggestion to that end would be that we read this, we consider the sentence that exists here. It is intended to encourage. Right. And if anything is not included there that we think we sh should be included, let's include it. So oh, then just you wouldn't have the list. Exactly. OK, just go because we yeah, we don't have to do it as a list. Um, it just needs to have all the points. I don't think we should. Ref one. I, it, exactly. I think we sh I think one is not appropriate for the bylaw right i'm not sure that we do anything to encourage to um i think open space is already included in the second sentence um social interaction is interesting maybe and then lid and green building maybe could be added to the second sentence right i think that those are the main Im improvements why um you think that we don't do enough or don't do anything about number two conform the development to existing topography and natural features because I think, don't we want to? That's um, two, two in the bulleted I list. think theoretically we want to, but I don't know if we've ever developed something that's practical that we are suggesting it, we try to implement where do we, here. Yeah, where do we talk well, about that? I mean, it, it, right now there is, they will not though. detract from the ecological and visual qualities of the area. Okay. Kind of is already in the language, yeah. Yeah, which is pretty general, you it know, is. but. Um, and the topography issue would be that's uh, isn't that sort of outside of the scope of the PRD? I mean, in terms of determining the maximum building height, or you know, uh, and, and doing like if you're if you're re if you're altering the topography, and you know, I'm thinking about elevations, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that would be governed by mm -hmm. the permissible height of the building based upon the ground before you. See, well, I guess I'm thinking of it more level. like. Like, oh, you mean if you remove a hill? Like right, cert, that's what I'm thinking of, the changes that... Okay, <laughs> no, I'm just I mean, thinking like of, land, like... Land that would... You would do right, that. and so, you know, going to the ecological and visual qualities of the area um, and not detracting from it, I do think that's important in terms of... But so when I read the topography and natural features, that to me means you're not making wholesale changes yeah, no. just to make room for something new. And so yeah. I didn't know if that um, those words spoke to it better than not detracting from ecological and visual, visual It's qualities. more specific. So I think we can do a nice combination of 
mm-hmm. um, you know, these bullet points, what we want to keep and, and what it is in the paragraph above. So I think to Kate's point, the natural features half of the sentence is sort of covered elsewhere already. It's mm-hmm. the topography, topography part that, that we is, don't that's have. That's very specific to me. It is. So maybe the, the, to make this really so concrete, we don't do anything about we what we're going to do is... about that anywhere else. Yeah. And that was so, the... Uh, so again, this gets back to um, <laughs> remembering that if you, if you make the bylaw too specific, um, then nothing will get built because um, you can have a site that has a small, you know, a small valley in it and they want to fill, you know, a small valley to, you know, for the mm-hmm. septic system or something. And, you know, the, you know, the response can easily be back, um, brought back that, well, they're not, you know, uh, it, the project doesn't conform to the existing topography. Well, it would be impossible for the project to go forward without mm. some change to the existing topography. So I think you just need to figure out the words that go with that. Well, what's the... Okay, it's so a great conform point. to the existing topography um, would mean somebody would come back and say, well, then, you know, they're doing cut there and fill there. We could and, say to and, the extent practicable. Uh, yeah, I mean, so, and, and, but I don't. I don't think so. So I mean, like maybe going more to basic concepts, the concern around modification to topography, but it's just it's an effort to preserve the existing landscape. Um, yeah. Then maybe what I mean that, that that's something that I think is a good principle could be reflected in the bylaw. But but like Elizabeth's saying, it would be. I think very hard to be much more specific than that because does that mean you can't do a retention basin? Does that mean right. things like that? You, um, I think it. I think it's a look and feel thing of of does it is the is the look of the landscape preserved versus any specific requirements? I mean, topographical requirements would be saying you know you, you can't have X amount of earth removed or brought in or um, you can't change the the elevation by x amount or just you know. right and we're talking about the ecological and visual qualities of the area is what the current bylaw says so it's pretty general but we kind of get to purpose. that yeah mm-hmm. right um i think the the topography comes it trickles down into the cost of development mm-hmm. so it's like it ends up impacting the amount of open space they can provide or how many units they have to build. Anyway. And, ra- and it's interesting that the, one of the bullets is consume less open space. Because that implies... That's the flip of yeah, the... Yeah. Instead of like preserve... It. I'm just I'm yeah. curious to know it's what I think. It's a flip uh, of the language. I that. think that meant like develop less land. I think that's what they're trying, yeah. trying to say. Um, oh, okay. And yeah. Huh. <laughs> so you could say <laughs> Which, um, yeah. a project that attempts to limit... Um, significant changes to the existing topography i mean now i'm now i'm hearing what they're saying about i don't think we should make it an emphasis right that that we might not want to might regret topography at all yeah all right so at this point are we changing anything in the purpose yes we're going to add the (laughs) we're going to add the lid and green building so second sentence add something about lid and green building Okay. All right. And, and I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, guys, because I'm a step behind. Is LID um, low, design, low impact it, 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 storm, it, it, storm water, water. water. Uh, work? That's, that's, storm, that's a defined term from storm water. Yes. Okay. As long it's as a specific type it's of capitalized here, and I yeah, I know it is a set of Wikipedia. Yeah. Yeah. I, so I it just, should be yeah. low impact <laughs> development. Um, yeah. Low imp- I think it's is it low impact development. <coughs> I think this was water design or something, but I'll yeah. find out. It okay. seems to be a specific methodology of assessing stormwater impact. Well, and versus designing certain, your curbs and everything as a consequence versus yeah. standards versus something like that's a standard list of standards or certification. But I'm also I need to know a lot about it, and because and folks also were saying, why are we just doing LID for? PRDs, we should and be doing a town wide, which gets back to the stormwater bylaw. It gets back to the stormwater bylaw. Yeah. 
This okay. is our pilot for it. Is the thank purities. you? That's you said that. Thank okay. You. Yeah. So I, actually, <laughs> I wanted to jump all the way to uh, uh, page four uh, in my unless anybody else has something. And, and it was the lot area frontage and yard requirements. Now I think our existing <clears throat> um, boundary, you know, limits mm -hmm. are based upon side yard setbacks, right? For the what number are you for the district it's that they're in. That when we say twenty feet. Today, that's like a side yard setback for residence C. And if we have a yes, 30 feet would be a residence A side yard setback. Um, uh, side yard setbacks in all districts is 15 feet. Oh, it's only 15. Okay. But I, I just was, again, worried about like increasing it to 50 feet. That could really have an impact on, let's say, if we have a one acre PRD, 50 feet in all directions, it gives you a pretty, you know, tight building area and no place for a central open space exactly so i don't like this change personally I, yeah I, I, I'm, I'm with you um i do like the buffer concept 22 10 to 5, 5 down below <clears throat> um, which just kind of legislates what we already negotiate but i wasn't sure about this like what exactly Effective buffering and screening. I mean, is it where there's a developed structure at, uh, along that property line, or is it along all property lines? Or do you know what I mean? As written, it's just the everywhere tract just, and adjacent yeah. property. So, are so are they, anywhere there's they, an adjacent property is how I read that. Yeah, so are it should be really between structures and roads? It, it. It really should have something about between built structures and now because it, if you're already in this a, versus anyone else. You know? Well, I think... Because of conflicts with the neighborhood. Because, I think because you're saying, instead of having one house there, you, there's a potential to be a cluster of buildings near your lot line. Um, correct. That's the intent. Um, what I'd um, like the board to think about is, you, you can say um, between the PRD track and... Uh, adjacent existing residential developments. Okay. So not just, you know, um, but something that uh, has been brought up uh, for the last few PRDs um, over the past couple of years is the concept of that 20, you know, that 20 foot um, or, th or 30 foot setback area, have that be a, an actual buffer um, and that it does not get calculated into the open required space. open space. Hmm, that's intriguing. Mm -hmm. Especially, oh. especially because you can see that that being turned into exclusive use areas and things like that. That it's, I, I mean, it doesn't end up really serving as a buffer. Um, seems. I mean, you can see the later on in the ten dot two dot six. There's that the statement that's been added around that you know land that's required for buffering shall not require be qualify as common open space. Yeah. But what if so that's, that's what if your open space that you're providing is is in the buffer? Part of the buffer? Adjacent to the buffer. I mean they should be able to count that as part of their open space. If their open space yeah. is also yeah. providing well, buffer. You like had a lot and all the development is on one side. Yeah. You, you run the open space the full length of the other side, and that, of course, runs the it lot Includes line. that but lot Why line. would you not include it in that case? I, yeah, I agree like, with that. I think yeah. Yeah. what you want to avoid is, you know, the, Just the skinny the exterior, strips yeah. being right. counted as... But as, do you, as you guys think that we already yeah. have that um, ability in the way it's written? Yeah. Well, the way that we... I think, I think so. we had that long discussion about the, the shape and the... Yeah, <laughs> the, you know, the of the open space or it has to, you know, fit this certain thing. Um uh, okay. Yes, please. Um, uh, <laughs> well, I'm just kidding. I no, I didn't this. mean to be. Um, two, so two questions yeah. for the the buffer space. Um, does that have to be green space, or can that include uh, roadway, driveway, anything like that? Um, I, I, that might not, already be covered somewhere. Not the way it's written, it wouldn't. Not it as has to be. Allie has written it under on page four ten two five five. 
It should be include a combination of deciduous and evergreen trees and lower level elements such as shrubs and hedges. But but currently, Cur currently there's no there's no no provision no requirement. <clears throat> they just, so just developers kind of talk about it as a. So I do kind of like adding that language for that purpose, so that you don't end up having a development that just says, "Okay, I'll run a road around," or you know, depending on the size of the lot, run the road. The circle to get the, the buffer space and build the houses along the middle mm -hmm. and share, shared open space in the middle. Um, all right, so um, something that we all need to um, just think about a little bit more for the next meeting, and I'll try and, and just send your thoughts back to me, and I'll try and, and, and I'll talk with Hallie some more and see if we can come, come up with something. I think it's impossible for to wordsmith. Yeah, yeah, but I did want to I just no, go, state there are a couple of yeah, yeah a couple other going. bigger items. Um, Wait, can we just okay. finish talking about buffering? So Wait, so yeah. Oh, no. my other second my second question kind okay. of related to that it is more of I guess uh, a legal concern. If we are now sort of specifically outlining this in that way, is that Trying to think of a way to talk about this. <laughs> um, this only applies to future development applications. Yeah, I had a different thought. Well, I'll come back when it comes back to me. I had a different okay. thought about this. But. I just don't want to, um, like, there could be an instance, I don't want to prioritize um, impacts of adjacent residential properties above open space. So mm -hmm. if we say you can't put a road next to the residential property, I mean, there might be some instances where yeah. we, we looking at the balance of all the resources we're trying to protect, that might actually be what we think is the best. So I just want to make, just say, you know, in general, we want to be maintain flexibility to look at each site as it warrants analysis. Yeah, I, it's a general comment, but it does go to this, this buffering and maybe the design principles in the state in the next paragraph. You know, in, inherently, a PRD is designed to bring flexibility to create an alternative form of development, and the each lot, the demands of each lot will be different. I think about where I live; it is a PRD, PRD, and it's a long, skinny, very long, skinny lot. It's a it was about two house lots wide. If, for example, you had a fifty foot buffer on either side, it would have been undevelopable yeah. because it's probably about one hundred and twenty feet wide in mm -hmm. total. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it's very long, you know, it's, uh, gosh, like a quarter of a mile long. Um, so, so I think that we're better off in, in, within the confines of a PRD, where, which is, you know, going through a planning review by this committee, by this board, um, dealing with better dealing with the more general principles. You know, I, I think what your concern is, and what we are, probably a lot of our concerns is that we're seeing common open space that's not being that that is of that's essentially scraps. lots of little scraps <coughs> that are added up to meet that percentage and maybe we can address that you know that separately by talking about the quality of the mm -hmm. op common yeah. open space as saying you know which the preference shall be for unified large space versus you know as opposed to you know, we already kind of have that. In yeah. There do we too. Need, but do we need to do that? I guess my question: Do as as it's written right now, if we as a sort of governing body on this decide that that a developer has laid things out in such a way that they are accounting for skinny strips as open space, that that does not meet the requirement in our eyes. Isn't that the kind of the final say of it? Like, there's yeah. no, there's nothing that outlines that we have to show explicitly that they meet X, Y, Z. This is, like, we view that this is not usable. We have a whole bunch of criteria already. Yeah. No, I, yeah, yeah, but it doesn't say like we've talked before about saying right. oh, it needs to be donut shaped, a certain or, size, yeah. dimensions, and all this sort of stuff. You say we are, we already have that leeway with We, yeah. we our, have the leeway. We just need to. Act on it and just say it. Just say and make the judgment no, on that, the criteria. That that does not meet it. Or yes, our standard. if it does meet the criteria, then in the beginning. Yes. Yes. Okay. 
buffering. We, we've we dealt with buffering. <laughs> All right, so we're on so to the next one. Make a note so, of some of the things for when you talk to her, you know, about, so, so, it's so hard to have where, it without her That's right, that current bylaw has that leeway. The common open space shall have a shape, dimension, character, and location suitable to assure its use for park, recreation, conservation, or agricultural purposes by at least all the residents of the PRD. So you, right. you, you already have that, you know, that And then statement. we give this list of preferences, which are for other cool yeah. things. So. I think that works to our benefit to have yeah. it worded as it is so now. Um, okay. It, it, it gives you the ability to evaluate each PRD based on its location, its merits, and its design. Mm -hmm. Um, I think there's a couple things in here that are not clear the way it's written. Do you want to hear them right now? In in current or? The current, not Haley's. Oh. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> okay, so the where you just were, Elizabeth. Uh -huh. 10 to 9. It's 10 to 9 now. Common open space. That first sentence, all lands <clears throat> within the purity track which is not covered by buildings, roads, driveways, parking areas, or service areas. Blah, blah, blah. Or is not set aside for exclusive or shared use by the residents shall become an open space. This says to me that whatever is either exclusive or shared use by the residents, whatever is not that shall be open space. Then the next sentence... No, not the next sentence. Somewhere else, it says that um, that it's that shared areas of shared use by residents is okay to be used as common open space. Um, oh. do, um, I can't find it now. I mean, I'll, I'll send it to you as a comment. But okay. there, that was one thing I was not clear okay. about is whether areas that were exclusively for shared use by residents is can be count as common open space. Um, the other thing was in, where's the, the requirement that's like developed versus undeveloped land? It's 50% requirement. Um, that's in the beginning. Two, 10 to 8? Uh, 50%. Um, do people's yards count as area developed for residential use? I think that we should clarify that too. In what section? You ten Sorry, to... it's ten to eight currently. Area of residential development. The area developed for residential use, including buildings, parking, or other area paved for vehicular use, shall not exceed fifty percent of the total area of the PRD tract. So when you're saying developed for residential use, that that list needs to be more specific about. No, I'm just asking, like, I'm asking you if that includes yards. Is it just meant to include impervious area? I mean, to me, isn't it defining it there? Developed for residential use, including, so buildings, parking, and other paved areas for vehicular use. So there's, those are the three things that comprise residential use. Okay, now keep going. Shall not exceed 50%. No, but keep going. Oh. <laughs> Foot and Foot bicycle, and bicycle paths, paths and recreational <clears throat> facilities, including buildings wholly devoted to recreation, shall not be counted in the calculation in the calculating the fifty percent limitation. And so, where do yards fit into there, or other? Like, Sounds like they're talking impervious. Yeah, this to is me. Well, what about patios? They're not. They're not paved areas for vehicular vehicular use. Um, They're impervious. But isn't it part of the building? What about a? So let me let me ask um, let me ask the institutional knowledge. Um, I'll ask Marcia if the intent of that section was for impervious. Can we just yeah, I think we should say impervious. That's what it is. But shuffleboard courts because those are for recreational use, but they're impervious. What are? Yeah, those are exclusively yeah. recreational, so they would, yeah, they would not <laughs> count. <laughs> Same with your, um, yeah. what do you call when you hit the ball? Inside? Okay, okay. Right. we got so it. 10, yeah. to, <laughs> 10 to 8 is that current. Um, yes. All right, Matt, you say, Matt, what, what were you that, looking at, Matt? 
I was but, going but, on to the oh, next sorry, section. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So what, if, if Marsha comes back and says, yes, the intent of that was only the impervious areas, um, is, is that something the board wants to consider changing? I, mean, I just want to know if it's I mean, supposed to include... I thought that we get PRD, sometimes they have no exclusive yards anyway. Yeah, we, if I were to read this, I would not... I would assume that it was not meant to include yard space, either right. exclusive or otherwise. Right. Or leaching fumes. Or right. detention basins. Um, or... Yeah. I, I think it was only supposed to be okay. impervious surfaces, but I, yeah. I'll, I will ask. Okay. All right. May I go to 10256? Unit orientation and design. So this... On Hallie's version. Yes. Okay. This strikes me as, you know, it's sort of like the West Concord design guidelines that have been put into here uh, in very compact form. But I, I once again, am a little uh, uncomfortable um, with this set of requirements. I also am even uncomfortable with the, that the buildings should be oriented to maximize solar exposure. Uh, because that conflicts potentially with tree canopy maintenance. Mm -hmm. So I, I can see any number of issues with legislating this stuff or, or mandating this. Um, I, I actually have raised a, this point with someone in the community about, you know, uh, solar ready buildings that once CMLP, you know, becomes all green energy, isn't it actually, if someone puts solar on their roof and they sell their recs, isn't that less green than the power they would otherwise buy from CMLP? So is it actually ironically less green to put solar on your roof? I don't know. What well, all I'm saying is I don't think that it's necessarily <laughs> an improvement. But, but, but they're just trading. They're, it's not, it's not they're as trading if, it, it's but, but CMLP does not trade their solar. They keep their recs. I, so. I agree that there are alternatives for, you know, green energy within the town, even if you don't have, yeah, even large if you have a tree, solar. a shaded site. Well, right. so the point, just so we don't run too far afield right. of these discussions, is that there are, we're, we're talking about things like HERS ratings and other um, yeah. standards, but we don't want to dictate a particular method. Right. Well, yeah, and, and rooftop solar, I'm just saying, I don't want to mandate rooftop solar here. Uh, that's all. Yeah. Because I don't see it and as necessarily, and I, I don't want to get into that whole well, discussion. I'll try to get into that discussion get into somewhere else. You can get passive house and things like that yeah. that would contribute. Oh, to and I would like efficient work. houses. Right. Those are great. That's independent of whether you generate your own power. <laughs> it is. It is. It. I mean, yes, I agree yeah, so that we, probably, we don't need this energy. detail. And I think focusing more on energy consumption yeah. and, and some sort of, you know, <clears throat> design to minimize that would be much more important. And then, you know, hopefully we'll all be, you know, getting yeah. good green energy. Okay. Uh, 10, 2, 5, 7. But I, I want to strongly preface all of these comments with our appreciation for her work. Oh, yeah. gosh, no. Yes. Well, we, this so, is great to get to this all the stuff to all of us right to the but camera. Haley, thank <laughs> you. We, really we go back this. and forth. <laughs> but also, <laughs> and it's hard that she's not here. I know. I wish Haley was here. I wish Haley was here. Was here. So yeah. let's, yeah. this is not going to be the last time we talk about this, right? Right. We're not just... No, but it is yeah. that she has given sure. us an opportunity to actually, you know, yes, I just want to make come sure to she, some conclusions she knows here. That. All right, well, ten two five seven. I'm very much for it, but is this all we need to say? I like ten two five seven. Right, I like it too, but is that enough? I don't know. I don't know enough about lady. Or, um, or is um, saying it in the preamble enough? Can uh, we ask the um, d the uh, Department of Public Works whether this is what we need to say here? I, I will ask the town engineer. Can can the town like if, if the town engineer were showed something, could they make that determination whether this is indeed low impact development techniques? Um, oh yeah, definitely. Okay, uh, but they may um, be able to because there there may be regulations already out there, and um, and mm -hmm. I know that they are also looking at their uh, construction standards, um, so. Can we so have someone come in and do like a lunch and learn for us a, mm -hmm. for LID? Do you know what lunch and learn is? Yeah. <laughs> but not lunch. It would be like now. <laughs> It'd be like <laughs> a glass <laughs> of wine. <laughs> It'd be like. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> cheesecake and wine. Um, I just hear sure. broad-based enthusiasm for learning more about LID. Sure. I, I would say that there are these great uh, seminars that are offered by the regional uh, there wasn't one on LED. Planners, where citizen they, planners. Really? I, I'll, I will, okay, because there have something. been. I, I, I okay. have, yeah. Well, the, there's also the annual conference, and typically there's something at the annual conference. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, or so we'll put the open. Center, right? The, the one that town players go to, or you think it's the No, no, the annual conference is Citizen Planner Conference. Oh, really? Which means okay. oh, us, awesome? citizens. But I mean, our planners so, also go. Yeah. yeah and and I really recommend it. Holy Cross, hmm. it, it's you one day you go there. For the CTPS, mm -hmm. yeah, no, yeah. they're really, the yeah, they're they're all over. But then they have um, in the spring they have this one at Holy Cross, Holy Cross. Oh, I'm in Worcester. That oh, Worcester, and that's and that's, and that's great. You just get there in the morning. Around. They serve you food. You you go. You get a whole bunch of these all in one shot. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, for ten two yes. five seven, the stormwater one. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Only question would, for me would be the last four words to achieve sustainability objectives I, I feel like again we should be pointing to something either elsewhere in the bylaw or outside of the bylaw not just have a broad statement like that objectives yeah what are those objectives it calls exactly. into question exactly um okay uh question i'd have for the board is do you feel like we have discussed two five Eight yes, already. Yes. I'm going to get input from uh, Kate Hanley and Gary Kleiman on it, you know if there is something similar to L um, lead for residential projects or whether there is an existing something similar to this yeah, table some sort of schedule that we could. Okay, <coughs> and likewise, do you think that we have already talked about the buffering? You know, that's included just, in the common open one, space yeah. one thought, I, So the concern about this tying into specific HERS ratings it was the. The, the static recitation of years. Yeah. yeah, that's. I mean, one thing to think about um, here is so lead. Um, my I don't know how it's used in residential, but I know in commercial. I mean, it's a very expensive. I mean, it's it's everything from you know it's not just do a blower test on a constructed building, right? Or it's mm -hmm. um, hers rating is I think you plug in the in, the R values of the insulation and how how well sealed it is. And at least when my house was built, there was a tax credit that I think largely paid for the testing process um, that can go to the developer. Mm -hmm. So that might actually be a, the, a mechanism that they appreciate um, because they can get, I mean, at the time it was a $2,000 tax credit for the unit, which covered the, the testing costs. Just something the, the, the problem I have with putting this type of chart in a zoning bylaw mm -hmm. um, is that the actual um, uh, merits, right. the numbers, yeah, everything changes. become debatable. And then so somebody you know, on the floor of a town meeting, um, mm. you know, this That's whole true. bylaw wow. amendment will get mm. um, completely in, in oh, yeah. hijacked. It, is, and it'll come down to, well, in 2025, um, that should be 27, not yeah. 28. Yep. And so that's where um, having it included in, in the bylaw for that reason, um, the reason that if something changes, you, you then have to go back to town meeting and you know currently two thirds vote mm -hmm. to change it. Um, okay, fair enough. And so I, I, I think there is a better way. Now. When's the last time this bylaw was like heavily yeah. adapted? Yeah. Probably more than 10 years ago. So yeah. just imagine this sitting in there for far too long. And we know we're going to have to change it. Yeah. Well, be terrible. Yeah. I mean, though, if you if you were requiring 14, I mean, that's I mean, if you said 20, 30 and thereafter, I mean, 14, I mean, the average yeah. is 100. So 14 is a pretty, pretty tight, tight house. house. <laughs> it's a tight house. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Actually, that's it's a house that actually doesn't returns. have a door. <laughs> <laughs> it's a submersible. Uh, okay. Shall we go on to, um, actually, in the same paragraph, there is the point about the percentage of open space. So I had last time proposed 33%. She's got 35%. Do we 
Did you have a discussion? Probably at the request of you know, what what they heard in the meeting. People were asking in the breakout. More was that there were the breakouts than, going for? I mean, people wanted ninety five or something. With all the trees, <laughs> just trees over tents. <laughs> tents. Um, I like that. Tree houses. Oh, Subterranean living. Uh, I don't know how to set that number up to the right place. Okay, so it's currently twenty five. Twenty five. I don't know what the, what the difference between 33 and 35. Two percent. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Actually, it's more than two percent. It's two points. Don't it, even. It, it's like eight percent more. I, so I, I, right, fair to, enough, yeah. yeah. Do we yeah. feel like... I don't know. The, could, and this is a totally honest question. Is it, the concern is about the there isn't enough open space in these developments uh, or are you a concern See? that um, is this a bad question? No, no. I just thought I just that looked I, I looked pressure. at the historical PRDs, the ones that School. didn't have that didn't have an affordable housing primary objective. And they all went over that 33% hurdle except for Milldam Square right up here. And it seemed like, okay, well, we've got a historic precedent there. And then you look at peer towns and we're all, you know, it's most they they go up to sixty percent in some cases, but they're they're in the thirties. So mm -hmm. I just thought, okay, we're already we we've, we've been really low at twenty five. Well, if we just bump it to thirty three, that seemed okay to me. Go from a quarter to a third. But I, I think we are trying to um, make a smaller footprint on that. Yeah, you know, so per, focus on preserving the open space means that you're going to have to make a more compact footprint. Mm -hmm. Well, and if that's the case, then you're going to have to change the height limit from 35 feet. That's yep. That's a good point. Oh, let's do that. Which, which I think, in terms of well, but in terms Neighborhood of some conflicts. Of, with, with some of the things that no, um, okay Alan that. had kind of shown us, didn't it seem like that's the way we were going? Is yeah. I think Alan wants to build a 60 foot tower. <laughs> no, well, and actually, <laughs> I've seen and some. I've seen some really <laughs> attractive 60 foot on, towers. Uh, Oh, I've seen right? in, in Holland. I saw great ones. Right. You get a nice park mm -hmm. in the middle. There's a 60 foot tower, and the whole thing looks great. great neighborhood character. Okay, so yeah. overall, we we think that because so, I'm just thinking about how these numbers add up. We've got 50 percent, a max of 50 percent mm -hmm. developable, impervious building driveway. We've got right now 25 percent. So I guess that relieves the remaining 25 percent could be exclusive use areas or or other things that don't fall within the definition of common open space. And well, they could be all wetland, that's what for example. Do all the numbers add up? Around Concord, is it, that's well, is it a probably what would happen. But is it 50 a percent like can be upland okay. of, of today. Is, uh, yeah. 50 percent has to be upland. Right, right but then the rest could all be wetland. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that that was the other thing Hallie did was did a, uh, took the chart that I had uh, messed with and then applied a factor based upon the um, the wetland percentage and ended up with like negative open space if you looked at you know the amount of wetland that was in uh, Milldam Square here it was 66 percent wetland hmm. um, so I think what she was trying to point out was just that um, you know right now we're not really ensuring that much upland open space mm -hmm. so okay um, yeah. but anyway I I just feel like um, it doesn't it's not a huge deal between 33 and 35 but i just think 33 is enough personally and gives us more flexibility um, and then it has good historic precedent um so you you would like it to be 33 is there i i'm still fine with 33 i don't Any? need to see the need to go up to yeah, 35. I, mean, so just, I, mean, I wouldn't it's still it's, it too much i was thinking about it i mean not enough to make it up, but 35%. Um, especially if if we think that, you know, given where there are places to do PRDs, that they would be moving more toward residents B and A. Mm -hmm. And you want to retain more open space in those areas, then why not go 35%? And I don't think it's going to be a very big challenge in those in those right. districts. In those districts, right. right? I mean, it's really you know anything that's in the future in residency that would be okay. 
I can be convinced to go either one of those numbers. <laughs> I mean, I, I, it, it might that. sound As more attractive. Thirty-five percent might sound more attractive to you know the folks at town meeting who support this, and and they hear that as a a move, a significant move from twenty-five percent to thirty-five percent. Okay. Yeah. Well, I it's not a make or break for me, so yeah. it's it's okay. And we might hear questions at the hearing, but I guess by that point it'd be too late. It's, no, we could amend it. So. Yeah. What about it's increasing the height? Increase in the so where is that? That's 10 to, to the beginning. it was 10 to 7, now it's 10 to 5, 3. Uh, would increasing the amount of open space be considered within the scope of the article? I would think that decreasing would be no. considered in the scope of the article, yeah, but not increase. increase. But what? what? So we could probably, you should probably put it 35% in the warrant because you can negotiate it down to 33 and still be in the scope of the Warren article okay. because it's it's less restrictive. But if you started at 33 and wanted to go to 35, you could not do so that once the warrant before published. town meeting yeah. after it's published before town between yeah. January and April. Uh, right. So you can okay. amend in one direction, not the other. Oh, I see. No. You mean the, so, the board so that convinced me? I'll do it. Well, let's go for 35. <laughs> you mean the board can amend? Or do you mean we can revise amendment. our warrant article after the publication after of the public, warrant, but only within the scope of the article, meaning that you can mm -hmm. relax things, you can't tighten things. Yeah. Right. But you're talking and, about and pre town meeting. And right. Yeah. Could, and you can't you could not do that on the floor of town meeting. Right. I, I, All the way I, up until the floor I, I of town you. meeting. And, but then in the floor of town meeting, somebody could vote to amend it. Right. Right, but I still don't think they You can still have to be in the scope of the article because it yeah. it's been noticed. And oh. people, if they need to be aware that what's in front of the board, yeah, okay, yeah, or the town. Great okay, to so let's go with thirty-five. Thirty-five, it is 35. okay. Um, and then <clears throat> I, my biggest problems were these uh, touched on height and bounced right back off of it before you. Yeah, I'm worried about going about thirty-five. But I mean, right now. It says 35, plain and simple. The only districts where we have more than 35 are industrial. From a construction perspective, I'm just wondering. So 35, you can fit a, that's, that can be a three-story so structure, Mildam? right? Mildam meets 35. And it can have a flat three. roof. Oh, I don't, I don't know. But there's oh, no, it did, no mid-peak or anything. Or it didn't have to it can be 35, have three people flat roof. <laughs> so huh? what's the question? How tall is the Mill Dam Square? I have no idea. How I tall said, the did, did it squares? have to meet a 35 foot height requirement? Well, was it because of its square? I, I don't know. Yeah, I think so. And I think that, again, it's a flat roof is a pretty big building if it's 35 feet. Yeah, and well, your, your question is three story building. Should... Well, I'm, what I'm wondering is is there a number that gets you, uh, makes it logical to add an additional floor? I mean, if um, we're not talking about having more height. So I, I, have a, I have a suggestion. Um, currently, the problem is, is under the PRD, it says height, a maximum of 35 feet. There's no waiver provision. Right. So you can include the same language that's currently in the bylaw under height, which is 16. Which would give a special permit for, for oh, so you would, relief from height. It would Because it's part of the PRD. You it's don't need part a of the PRD. Paper. You can just say the planning board may grant relief from the above um, height requirement. Um, they find that the desired relief may be granted without substantial detriment to the neighborhood. I that, think that yes. is the right answer. Yes. Okay. Okay. Let's do that. We're in. Cut. Paste. <laughs> um, so in, in, in that actual section under 6 to 11, it does um, say um, uh, the literal application of this requirement would be unreasonable because there are no reasonable alternatives available. I, I find that an unrealistic it's a very high bar. It's a high bar. It, it's an unrealistic standard to. So what is? I mean, you could always make a shorter building. Yeah, you can. Know, I mean, so why why have that statement? So well, although the last part I mean, there was this so the one that the special permit for the A and R lot on Highland Street that was granted because, you know, they were saying it was like there's basically a cliff on the back of the. Mm. The lot, and so that the right, and and they actually said, you know, a reasonable, you know, alternative is if they if they didn't grant the waiver to Ten B Highland, yeah, um, that um, it would be this short squat house 
that was actually uncharacteristic of the neighborhood. Yeah, it yeah. Wouldn't, it wouldn't fit in with the neighborhood right. if they met. It would be a one-story one flat roof house that then went downhill. Yeah. So the, special, the Board of Appeals did grant a special permit waiver yeah. to the height to allow. So right now, I mean, by the way, we don't want to weaken that bar in m right. most residential districts. You want it to be a tough, tough thing to yeah, go over. Um, but in the PRD, we've got this sort of more comprehensive review that we're doing. And I think in the, in this, you know, mix, we could have this. Okay. Uh, we're almost done. Well, okay. So density, so density bonuses The she's talking about, um, First of all, perhaps getting giving bonuses for setting aside more open space. And I would say historically, we have not had to do that. Okay, the residents A or double A, you, we've been seeing 60% open space, more, you know. Um, so I don't think that we necessarily have to offer that up as a bonus. And then for housing diversity, the suggestion was to, you only get um, one additional market rate unit for every two affordable units. Is that what it says? I think that's what she's saying. And there would definitely never be an affordable unit built if that were the ratio, because it, it, it takes- Where's the language you're seeing? In 10 to 8 to, it says, for every two units of dwelling re restricted in perpetuity, or every one unit for low income, one market rate dwelling unit may be added. And it, it basically costs more than one unit of additional to recover the cost of the affordable, in my experience. You know, she, this is language from the town of Hudson. I'm curious to know why. It's probably cheaper in Hudson. It. Yeah, we're definitely going to cheaper. You know, here it's 500K gap between. I'm, it's just curious that that could make that much of a difference in terms of, because that's pretty bold. Uh, well, I can contact the town planners there and see if anybody would well, I mean, even use it. Yeah, yeah, just if you think that it's useful information for us to have for reference, because. Yeah, I just it, don't see it. I mean, it, it's just, you know, so I, what Marcia mentioned, um, you know, at, at one of the meetings that she was in for you was. Kind of a while back, there was this trade-off um, between, you know, well, we, we made some changes to the PRD requirements because we wanted more affordable, and then we kind of lost I don't know, yeah. open space or whatever, you know, so with the trade-off. Nobody so, used it. Yeah, so, you know, how important is affordable housing? Talking Going back to what Elizabeth said about the four things, you know, which are most important, and are they definitely rising to the top? Yeah. I mean, right now, we do have a process I mean, it hasn't generated a lot of affordable units, but we do have a process for granting bonus density. I mean, even then, developers, even with the terms we have, we're not getting many I know. And density bonuses. I feel like we should be. I know, but it's not working that because, way. Because affordable, I mean, affordable tightening it up units, is certainly not going to help. Affordable units should be in the same area where market rate units are. I mean, that's yeah, kind of what Yeah, that's the principle and, right. for the town. Yeah. Um, so I, I disagree with making those changes to that section. Is there anything we could recommend looking into that would encourage? Um, I, I can't remember if, if affordable housing is mentioned anywhere else. I might only be in conjunction with density, right? Yes. Okay, so this is the only area we have to To really encourage incent uh, yeah. the development. So it seems like we want to put a little star here that we want to come back and... Well, uh, so the conversation kind of needs to focus, right? Is the PRD... To protect open space, or is it to create affordable housing? Yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean that's always I mean, been the thing with the PRD. But I think it's to, it's two and one. So, but here's the problem. So think of four thirty old Bedford. That um, ended up being open space. But you know that he started with. Stephanie. He started with affordability for the bonus units, but then it right. it really got in the way One of open unit. space. And and so when when it came down from from that from you know so eight. One unit had to be affordable. Seven, one unit had to be affordable. Six, one unit had to be affordable. No, six, it wasn't doable, he said. Well, but that, but I'm currently, the, right. the bylaw, if, 
right. in terms his, of what his, the bonus. His basic density was four. Right. So if he went to five, one unit had to be affordable. And right. so they're 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 everybody has to understand there there is a real market cost, you know, Two, do benefit it. analysis, you know, yeah. that you know, well, five and one affordable, it, you know, mm -hmm. no, to do an, do an affordable, especially in this community, you, you probably are talking about one affordable, you get two additional market rate yeah, units. Yeah, I agree. I mean, that's... Or, or why do it? So, right. um, I don't know what that, that calculation is, but... Um, well, and we don't specify it in the PRD now. We say that you can get bonus density up to double based upon offering affordable housing. And we don't say do how a, many you have to do. Right, but so, to be able to do a bonus density to have affordable housing, you're talking about having to utilize more, more area of the, of the lot, you know, un, un, unless you're going up or you're going into, a, you know, a, a, a four unit single, you know, a four unit building. And so again, that gets back to that if you proposed a four unit building, that's not compatible with a neighborhood. We don't have any apartment type buildings. So that's where that inherent conflict you know, starts. But we have used the PRD bylaw to create a bunch of affordable housing, Lolly Woods, uh, you know, there's, there's all of these different ones that were under the same provisions of the bylaw. So we don't want to lose that. Well, but no, so that gets back to there's and that's other sections that are that's a saying, section. yeah. So you know that's. So you know, you're that's saying to maybe just junk the bonus density. No, I'm not. I'm just. I'm. I'm. Just I think we just leave it. Throwing out the you know the the internal conflicts of the bylaw. Mm -hmm. So in this section, if you're what is the special provisions? If you're a, a nonprofit entity, you know, you, and. Uh, which 75% of the units will be, you know, affordable, then you get to disregard everything under 1026 and 1027. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, I do like, you know, right above that. So in talking about what, what we're incenting here, the proposal in 10283 <coughs> is... Um, a, an increase of basic density if the units have all electric appliances, um, you know, or whatever we want to say there. Um, I, I, I would like to make uh, incentivize developers to build more energy efficient things. And I'd let them build more of them because I guess my concern overall is let's not keep building very large houses, which I think are going to be very large consumers, and you can tell me how tight they are, but still, it's just, yeah. Um, and so if you can show me that you're not going to have a large energy consumer and that it's not going to be a large fossil fuel consumer, then I would like that to be rewarded. I would like people to, uh, developers to invest in that and be rewarded. And if there's more of those, I would feel better than if there were fewer, less efficient. Well, that's the, that's the carrot approach. Approach, but there's also the sort of more global stick approach, which is that I've heard that there's a citizen petition article being proposed for a town meeting next year that would just outlaw the creation of any fossil fuel infrastructure for any new development. So it wouldn't be, you know, mm. you wouldn't need this provision because there it wouldn't even be a possibility. Well, well even uh, if we made it more like, you know, efficient, if you can, if you can demonstrate, you know, what the impact, uh, what the, you know, oh, well, energy that would be going so back to. It hasn't passed yet, so. Yeah. No, well, it's and, true. And, and, I'm not, and, and I'm not sure that's. I mean, as long a, as that's a legally attainable, um, you know, as far as. They claim yeah, there's already a couple of towns that have done it. And, so. Yeah, but they haven't been implemented. No. Or even necessarily proved it. Can we just, or there may be a lawsuit. Who knows? Can we get um, back? But, to, oh, go ahead. But just to talk about that carrot approach as far as um, Halley's 10, 2, 8, 3, yeah. a, you know, some percentage of increase in basic density calculated if the units, um, if all of the units are um, less than 2,000 square feet and have all electric appliance. I mean, you can... You can have more of those carrots in this list. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I really like that. I mean, and just for consideration, throwing out the square footage piece, because you talked about the inherent conflicts in, in the bylaw. I mean, so the, 
it, it, to me, it makes a lot of sense to use the the bonus density to create affordable because I mean, the developers do the math, a third of their cost is in the land acquisition cost. If we effectively give them more land by allowing them to build an extra unit, then, I mean, their, their incremental cost to build their affordable unit should be, I mean, they, you could almost, I think, do one for one. I mean, a developer would tell you you need 10 to one, but it's probably one to two to one. But then you have the issue that you run up against like the 50% of developer, you know, you, the, to develop it. But if you're saying, you get bonus density if it's under a certain size, then we hit the affordable from a couple points. First of all, if you're say you're building two thousand square foot houses, they're going to be probably more affordable. Yeah. Concord, I mean, I mean, two thousand square feet in Concord is what eight hundred thousand to a million dollars. But you say you, affordable you, with more, a little more. <laughs> more. He, he said we qualified it more affordable. They are less no. less expensive. Less, less expensive. expensive. <laughs> affordable shooting. Yeah, but but no, it, okay. I mean, it seems like a really. I mean, and that came up in the discussion we had on the on the accessory dwelling unit. That really. So I mean, you could say, um, two thousand square feet, one car garage, um, and and two thousand square feet. I mean, you have to specifically gross floor area. Well, it can't be living area because. No, you could say like a floor area ratio. Um, yeah, um, yeah. Yes. You could right. say excluding. Basements, basements and, opened in screen yeah. porches, yeah, decks, yeah, yeah, for yeah. Sure. sure, and a one car garage. Well, okay, but right now we do count Maxine. garages in you, a floor you, ratio. You, you so. do, but um, yeah. no. But she's saying is a, a separate consideration. Yeah, yeah. That you allow a one that, that you specify for the purposes of the PRD bylaw, yeah. you car, allow a car. car. So, but I'm wondering how those things would work in concert. Like if you if you do all of these three things. Include affordable unit, or you know, maximum square footage. Oh, I'm not. I'm not. I wasn't including yeah. the infor the affordable unit yeah. side of it but, because but, I think this is getting to that middle that oh. um, that missing middle, mm -hmm. a two thousand square foot unit. If you just made the number twenty five hundred, you wouldn't have to make the exclusion for the garage. But that guy. Um, yeah. yeah, but then then you wouldn't one. then you wouldn't get a one car garage. You would just get a 2,500 square foot unit with no garage? Oh, maybe. I'm or okay with a car, that. A carport. Carport? I mean, it's a, still a big house. It is. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's and, big. All right, well. And, and yeah. considering my house is by 42, so. Yeah, yeah. okay, well. My house is I, on, on, on paper. I was just trying to avoid the exception yeah, for the garage. I just, you know, okay. <laughs> but I, I definitely want us to look into that, and, and I think that could be highlighted as a very attractive um I like all these carrots. Yeah, yeah I, I like to do a multi carrot approach. I really okay. like the square footage idea. Yeah. yeah. So if so, so basement basement because you have included basement. Oh, I do not. So not basement. you know, so an an opened um, an open screen porch or a deck doesn't get counted in square footage anyways. Right. So I mean, you could do okay. You could do. Um, Isn't it called a, condition half, space? Maybe twenty. I thought they twenty five hundred square feet. The, the thing is Explaining. referencing, you can't limit the size of a dwelling unit in zoning bylaw in Massachusetts in living area. Okay. Yeah, that's, it's just spelled out right. Yeah. You, you, yeah. You can't, you no, you can't restrict the interior living space, space of a house saying you can only have a kitchen, a mm -hmm. family room, a bedroom, mm -hmm. one bathroom. Oh, two, you okay. can't restrict it in that manner. Okay. But the statement's pretty much oh. a blanket statement, though. But you could say twenty-five, you know, limit twenty-five hundred square feet with um, excluding a one-car garage, with with only a you know, I'm not going to wordsmith it now, but something where it says you can have twenty-five hundred square gross floor area, um, which uh, and you know excludes a one-car garage, and it only has and, a one-car garage and or something. I don't know. Gross gross floor area include. Um, basement. Okay. A basement? Yeah, right. you can. Yeah, you can right. Say so that. they couldn't yeah. say that's not going to be a finished basement when we know it is. So. Well, if it, if the basement doesn't have a ceiling height of greater than seven, six, eight, six, yeah. eight, then um, it wouldn't be. So I that so that's just something to think okay. about, and um, I can try and work yeah. something. I, I though I, I would keep it under twenty five hundred. I, I, I would too. I would want to see a smaller number. Twenty well, twenty twenty five hundred. Um, I would say and it, that would include a, the basement and a garage, but you would specifically say 
you know, 2,500 square feet, a one, car, a one car garage. Oh, so the 2,500 includes the garage space if you do it that way. And the but basement. You, in the basement. Okay. That's starting to get, that means your actual living space is probably in the mid the teens, I mean, like 15, 1,600 square feet, which is, would seem cavernous to our parents, but <laughs> are still um, modest by today's standards. I like so, but I'm not sure how you incorporate the affordable components. Well, and I think to your point, um, maybe we use other, you know, we're pursuing other ways of affordable housing and <clears throat> this, you know, this incentivizes other, yeah, other metrics of, of Well, just like other aspects with the accessory dwelling units and things like that. So we don't have to try to do everything with this PRD. Bylaw. So what do we currently have? I mean, the way this has been edited, I'm a little confused. What, where is our current bonus density section? Is, um, was it been cut ten, out and replaced? Or? Ten, it, uh, currently it's under 10 to, uh, uh, 10 to 3. What is now the 10 to 3? Yeah, is 10. there you go. It's talking about the diversity of structures. No, the old so the maximum right. This is the old ten two three. Ten two. The maximum permissible density within a PRD shall not exceed ah, two times right. the total number of dwelling units obtained through the application of ten two two one, which yeah. is basic density. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it says if, if it's all market rate, you only get basic density. Right. Increases beyond only if at least 10% of the units are, are, are made available as described in 10, 2, 3, and 10. Right. And then we talk about alternating between SHI and moderate affordable for the additional units. It's, I think it's okay. It's wait, this is interesting. So this is saying... You can go over basic if 10% of the total units. So you don't have to have, right. It, it are, are qualify as, as one of these categories of yeah. affordable. I'm just thinking. About so it's not a one for one or anything. You, you, you could just add a couple of units and even, you know, get a lot more density in theory. You know, in practice, we might not accept it. Wait, but let's say, so let me just. Say so you had 20 units as your basic density. Yep. So if you were to build 21, you'd have to make, you could only have 19 market and, 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 and two would need to be affordable. If you built 22, that, that would be your breakover point, where, right? Where you've got each of your two additional units that you're building would need to be affordable. It's not until you get to 23, 24, 25, that you start having, you right. being able to build additional market. Right. Well, yeah, but that's the thing. It's like so you're not going to go that. over your bonus density unless you're going to go a fair amount over right. your bonus right. density. Right. That's why we saw that yeah. drop down. Yeah. At, at right. From seven to Bedford. four. Yeah. So I, I, I was confused because I know we not too long we've looked at a project that was one or one over the. I think. Well, are we but also confusing that the, the affordable unit means they are breaking even on that unit, that's no. not necessarily the case. Because that what you're saying there is that basically the only incentive they would have is once they go beyond 23 and beyond, because they get that extra market yeah. rate one that they didn't have before. But that's under the assumption that the two that they've built, they're not making money on. But that's also not true. They are making money on those. We're allowing them to make less, incrementally less, for those two units, quite, but quite, still making money. Yeah, quite a, quite a bit less. I mean... Probably, but I mean, this, this, no, we're, I'm, yeah, we're, we're I'm, talking the affordable unit at um, Black Birch Two, two hundred and twelve thousand dollars. Oh wow! Okay. And so where is where is the other ones are not, not so, making money? With the market, no. the market theirs were were about a million dollars, right? Yes. Yeah. So, and that's deed restricted, though. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's at eighty percent. And it doesn't count to our in, towards our inventory. Uh, that those do. that one does. Those two. Oh, is that yeah. phase two? Yes, phase. So two. it's not fifty-five and over. Oh, Wasn't that the is. problem? 
Oh, maybe that might be the well. It's all fifty-five and over, so that might. That's be That's why he was going to give the town a million dollars instead, or something. Right, because these don't count. But they are. Deed they restricted. still offer. But they're and they're deed restricted at the state level. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry. It's okay. So, uh, I think we've given you some <laughs> input. I'll try. And I think we had a really extensive discussion of the peer, thorough, thorough discussion. Mm -hmm. So I we think that to. we've come to pretty good consensus overall. We'll see where we land when good this luck, comes Elizabeth. back. Uh, <laughs> I just want to so reiterate. Let me, so let me, let me, oh, go ahead. Well, just to reiterate, I really like the idea of tying bonus density to square footage because it really kind of goes to exactly what we're doing with what the peer we're trying day, to which do. Is concentrating the development but al and allowing you know a creative model for it. And it would be a way to do it where it'd be a nice way to do it. Sacrificing open space. Okay, right. that, that, uh, was, that was potentially thank you for saying that. That was gonna bring me back to we kind of tried to pass it through it out, but the proposed ten point two point eight point one. Um, I mean we can change the starting threshold instead of being a thirty five percent, but doesn't that automatically you do that in an organic way. I mean, you you are limited on space. You are, you are saying, I'm going to increase open space, which means you are now limiting buildable space. So you're by, you know, you're going default, to... you're, you're making smaller units for each one you're adding. Maybe. I, I mean, I still... Or you're packing them together more or you're... Yeah, which we looked at some good examples. Yeah. That was perfectly good, good for that. But yeah, I mean, you're right. It could be somebody who, who, you know, kind of sloppily just packs them together, but then that doesn't meet the character threshold. Yeah. Well, and I, I just, I think character now with the long range plan and things like that really has to take into account, you know, energy consumption and sustainability and, and certainly stormwater and all this stuff that, that seems to be what was big in the plan and, and from public comment and things like that. Yeah, and I shouldn't say that, I mean, pack in sounded derogatory and I wasn't <laughs> saying that. I meant they could create a more dense pattern of development. Um, I think what we also though want is right sizing the units to future demographic requirements, which we're having trouble kind of encouraging. And the, the proposal be, does that. That would be another, another, another carrot. Um, is um, what's the term in the building? Um, uh, is it zero entry? Is it oh, level, accessible. Oh, oh, level uh, entry? Uh, visitable, I've heard. Yeah, you mean there's, there's a term for yeah, you where, know, for basically uh, for accessible yeah. units. So right. there's there's absolutely no steps to right. So you have Blackbird Universal one. Accessibility. Um, I think all of them have like four three steps to get up to the front door landing, you know, two steps in the garage to get into the house. So yeah, there's a term for for, for this that. kind Some of sort of accessibility. Yeah, somebody actually brought that up at that. That's at what the, I was thinking. At the, uh, in the discussion. That supports age in place. Yeah. Yeah. I think, is it zero? It might be level entry she, or zero I didn't, entry. I didn't, I didn't know that particular thing, but she, she definitely mentioned something about the there's somebody who was essentially asking if we could have an, like an ADA it, requirement. Yeah, an incentive for you know complying for with ADA yeah. requirements, options for older people over time. Yeah. But Matt, going back to the smushing yeah. smushing places together, I mean, it would be similar to when we, I think you and I were talking about that the a meeting last week. Uh, where it turns out, I guess you lived across the street from where I live now, and yeah. that's a three unit. Right. In what appears to be a two unit building space yeah could be made to look like a single unit if you really wanted to mm -hmm. um, so I mean there's ways to do that oh, and, yeah. and if this sort of incentivizes that uh, I don't, I guess I don't see um, a so another, good argument to exclude it for now yeah. <laughs> another aging in place um, uh, something I read I, I believe it's in uh, is it in Scotland you know, requiring a full bathroom on the first floor. Mm -hmm. um, and that's to allow aging in place. Hmm. So people can, you know, there's like a, a bedroom in the bathroom on the first floor. Okay. Um, All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to ask now, since there's at least four of you here, or I'll just, I'll have Nancy send out a, just a doodle poll 
um, to hold January 7th. Okay. Um, as um, like a last ditch. Watch ditch work, effort. Work Isn't it check. already on our calendar? It's not? I have it on my calendar. Do for you? Some reason. What's sorry? What's That's January seventh? January seventh is a planning board meeting. Is it? I, mean, I don't is have. Is that not a regular? I, I don't have. That's meeting. what I thought. Right? But oh, okay. Oh, that's good. oh, it is. You are right. There is a meeting January seventh. We'll hold it then. Okay. Um, all right. So at this point in time, you have January seventh, December seventeenth, and December tenth. <coughs> Excuse me. And December tenth will be busy. Um, Possibly. <laughs> I think it, that one is going to be lengthy. Um, and uh, just um, procedurally, based um, your, on your meeting schedule, um, we are looking at an alternative location for your December 10th meeting. That's exciting. So we will let you know. It will either be Harvey Wheeler or the Thoreau School. Okay. Um, ready let to move on to minutes? <laughs> But, uh, Move on to minutes. That's <laughs> our uh, October 22nd minutes. I think those are the only ones that we actually received. Yes. Um, I sent Nancy two comments. One was page two, second paragraph. I suggested that it say she rather than I. Um, and then on page four, second paragraph. Uh, in the board's comments section, Mr. Ruta spoke at length in response instead of Mr. Ruta spoke in length in responsive. Good. Not very consequential, but... Accuracy is important. Any other comments on the minutes? Did I get a motion? Um, I... Move to accept the minutes as of uh, October 22nd as amended. October 22nd, 2019. Second on that? Second that, yeah. All right. Great idea. All in favor? Okay. Uh, committee liaison reports. I went to the chair's breakfast. Um, not a whole lot to report. I mean, how are the other chairs? The chairs are doing great. <laughs> Good. Um, trying to think of what any any real breakthrough items that I heard there. Um, I mean, there was some recitation of the dates that are coming up for, you know, there's going to be a, a town meeting preview meeting where we need to go through the list of our. Um, uh, what we expect to bring before a town meeting and that's in early December. So there's going to be a little prep for that well, It's Saturday, December the, se 7th. the 7th. Is so that that's before our that? next meeting and I think I'm tagged in it mm -hmm. on That one, but I'm gonna to need to work with you Elizabeth to just make sure I got the full list Is that everybody previews their articles anyone? Who has an article goes to this meeting? every every committee yeah okay. brings okay. their article so that the moderator knows what's coming, yep. uh, roughly. Okay, so that was, that was probably the most consequential thing that came out of the chair's breakfast. Um, and uh, I also just wanted to mention, I met with the member of the public, uh, Alice Kaufman, who told me about uh, this uh, citizen's uh, petition uh, bylaw uh, possibility of uh, no new, um, natural gas or you know any fossil fuel infrastructure for new construction um and so uh, that's that's something you know he, she was curious because she said i mean i i had said i think that it's going to be a general bylaw if that goes it's not a planning mm -hmm. you know zoning bylaw so we wouldn't be the ones that would be owning it but on the other hand we'd be likely to have to weigh in on it before town meeting um, so no, not if sure it's a citizen. That. Well, she said that the planning board in Belmont weighed in on it for the similar bylaw that they had. Because I, I raised that question as well. I'm, it's 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 a sustainability, and I mean it's not a it's not a zoning land use general bylaw. Uh huh. Um, 
and, do we? And I don't know the practices of Belmont. I mean, the Belmont Planning Board may weigh in on every single article. I don't. Active. Yeah. I don't know. So whether the <clears throat> planning board in another town weighed in on something similar, I don't. I I would have to know more about that. Okay. Um, well, we may. I mean, if if that came forward, we might decide that we want to speak in, in favor or against something like that. Just. Mm -hmm. As you know, stand up and test to it. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I say that is because we have been trying to weave more, um, uh, you know, sustainability elements through ours, so we could, I could talk to whether that would be complementary to our zoning. I think the board would have to have a discussion once it's written. Okay. The the other she also said that there are two other bylaws that um, might come forward. One is uh, that would require seller disclosure of the energy efficiency of a unit at the time of sale. So basically, you'd have to tell the buyer what your hers rating was. I think. And then the third, which is still tentative due to possible okay. conflict with the stretch code, would mandate a maximum hers rating for all new developments. So, it, is this coming from the climate? Uh, well, and that was a question that I asked back uh, afterwards, which was, why aren't these coming from our town committees? Um, I haven't gotten a reply. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I just. Uh, I mean, we have uh, multiple town committees that are on these issues. So, right. With the, and we have a town sustainability old, director. Right. Uh, you know, make sure this is a citizens together. initiative. So. Um, is there, when the warrant comes together, does an attorney look through it just to yes. see what the yeah. legality yes. of everything is? We just is? got one of those today on ours. Town okay. council yeah. reviews everything. Yeah. Including like the citizen, whatever is. Oh. Yes. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. And so if it's, if they see a problem, do, does that just get noted in the, whole, in the warrant or does, does somebody actually take it out? Um, no, once it's submitted in the warrant, it is in the warrant. If it's a citizen's petition, it is in the warrant. Yeah. Um, town council will review it, and I think it was two. And years. that can happen. Two years ago, you know, council, the town council, um, stood up and, um, oh, and it. and usually that happens before <laughs> town meeting, and yeah. the, and the petitioner is informed of town council's opinion. So, um, I believe was it last year there was a similar article, and um, the petitioner withdrew it, was allowed to make the town moderator allowed the person to make a statement. But they withdrew the article. Yeah. Um, just briefly, it's it's CPC busy season. This mm -hmm. is when we have our sometimes weekly meetings because we have all our applications in and we're deliberating. Um, it's a, kind of an exciting discussion because we're oversubscribed for requests by about eight hundred thousand dollars. So we have to make real. Um, we, can't, Real cuts. we can't just give everybody a 5% haircut. We have to <clears throat> probably exclude some, you know, some big projects who are balancing the direction of the select board who, who provides us a li priority list and, and other boards that weigh in. Um, we are also, um, we also have an, an interesting issue that we've had town council weigh in on, um, on funding for uh, buildings that are owned by religious organizations mm -hmm. and, and putting funding to that and recent, you know, recent Massachusetts case law. So it's been an interesting committee to be it's on this, this round. If anybody has questions about the projects of which ones are <coughs> in the, uh, in the running, it's a little premature. We've sort of identified the ones that we think are safe bets, which are things like the contribution we make to the, uh, Regional the regional housing, housing services. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a small portion that has a big, Big return. For example, we got a we got something back like two hundred thousand dollars in grant money through that office, and we make about a twenty thousand dollar investment per year. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, there's a meeting next week where we will probably get much closer to a definitive list. And What's your deadline things. for that? When do you? Well, when do they try to, to make it a a goes into the warrant. So, oh um, yeah, well, we get it okay. done in this in the, by the I think by the end. December. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any other reports? Okay. Uh, public comment. Um, actually, I do have a comment. Susan Bates, um, Concrete Green. Uh, my colleague who attended the forum 
said it was so informative and she's not because this isn't one of her committees she doesn't you know keep on top of what's going on but she said it was enormously valuable to her and she learned a lot so Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for that feedback. I'd like to thank Matt for preparing everything. Yeah, no, and, I, and, and thinking about the breakout sessions, I think it worked out really well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the presentation was great. Okay. Well, great. All right. Well, thanks, everyone, and we're ready to adjourn. And happy yeah, one thing. Oh, 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 oh. Um, is it possible, I, based on the rules for the board, for us to have a like Holiday party together, like at a restaurant or something so nice. like that, and it not be like. You can have a holiday party. <laughs> yeah. Town clerk has already provided, you know, funds. Has already provided an opinion, which you know comes from the attorney general. Oh. Yeah. You can have a holiday party. You can have you you can have fun. Can't talk about you can sure. talk about. Everything else. You can talk about uh, the, the impeachment, impeachment hearing. Yeah. You can talk about uh, your, you know, your Christmas vacation. Um, but you um, but you can't yeah. have a holiday party, yes. Okay. I make a motion to nominate Nate as head of the committee <laughs> for holiday Picking a place so and a date. I brought, it, I brought it up for that purpose. So, yes, I will, I will organize that. Okay, great. Um, and, uh, yeah, the, actually, the West Concord Advisory Committee does have one. Uh, can we crash it? Busy. You can crash it. You can crash it. It's going to be at. Um, I was just trying to get the date 99. here. No, no, it's across the street at um, the, the what was it the salt box kitchen. Wood They've got a table that has been reserved. Um, just, basically, stand, stand up around the them. table. Yeah, yeah, just yeah exactly. One large table. There. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. We just take over that table. It's it's happened in past years already. So uh, anyway, uh, there we are. And what's the date? It's not here. And I'm mad at me because I didn't. I want to rezone instead of giving him a grocery store. That you, you can't talk about that at that party. Okay. Um, all right. I I can circulate the date. I'm okay. sure for the West Concrete Advisory Committee, but that that might be an option. Wait, I don't understand. I'm not on that committee. They're a subcommittee of ours, so we are we're fully uh, in our rights to crash their yeah. party. Yeah. We're not here with the circuit judge. <laughs> could, could you show up and, yeah, the, the circuit judges. Yeah. All right. Or if we want to have our own venue, we could, sure. If we're going to be exclusive about it. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Thanks. Cheers, everyone.